Hello, my fellow adventurers! This is Malucha, and welcome back to New World. In the previous episode, we took an in-depth look at the blunderbuss and all its abilities and perks you could get, and an overall look into the damage it could do and the versatility that it could bring and the movability that it brings. Today's episode, we of course got it level 20, meaning that we got our hands on its legendary, well, I guess, well, I call them epic quests because they basically don't give the legendary weapons, they give epic weapons, but the 580 weapon quest that we can get for the blunderbuss. So Wang Tang Ji here in, uh, in uh, Ebon Scale Reach does have the quest. Let's quickly see what we actually need to do. She, <laughs> let's actually see what we need to do for this blunderbuss. Greetings, I seen you pass, but I had no chance for introductions. Wang Tang Ji, weaponsmith at your service. You seem to have a discerning eye for weapons. Would a beautiful blunderbuss, a true work of art, interest you? You have my full attention. Excellent. This will require materials of the highest quality, but you don't strike me as someone who'd shy away from a bit of danger to acquire them. Ah, such a weapon will craft for you. It will be the pinnacle of our work. Who is we? Me and my partner, Alvero de Vel Villanueva. <laughs> Villanueva. These first components are for him, for an exquisite stock. With the preparations I've given you, he should have... He should have no problem with this piece, regardless of what he might say. And the quest is the last argument. So let's accept this quest. And we get a stock of ironwood in Eden Grove. Seek a needed ingredient in the area of Wright Peak. That is over here on the map. Our quest did just update, telling us we need to obtain four embedded resin from Dryad Elementalist in the nearby cave. And these Elementalists are... Okay. And I'm, of course, gonna play a little bit more with this blunderbuss as it really does. Back a bunch. Let's get out. There we go. And this should be. It's a prowler. Prowler. Yeah, it is in the cave nearby here. And we do get. Stock of iron wood. But the quest is also here at the Genesis of Spite. Hmm. Seek a needed ingredient in the area of Genesis of Spite. Okay, so for this quest, I think we're gonna need to be at, like, two different locations. Let's push him back a little. We do want to be careful. These guys do hurt. Yo! Don't wanna die. Yo! Come on! Get out! No, don't get trapped. Switch. Heal. Heal, damn it. Let's throw those heals on the floor. Let's push him back. Trap him a little bit. Get some AoE damage in there. We pulled the tiger on us. So much damage. Let's get a heal up in there again. Back. There we go. Yo, 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 yo. Blast him away. Knock him to the floor. Reload, please. Ooh. All right. So it should be in this cave. And there's already... Yeah, there's probably got to be a lot of people on this quest. And this is one of the elementalists. Let's knock it to the floor. That's one. That's 
one that we got. And did we get a second? Yeah, there we go. So that's two. Is there a dryad up here? An elementalist. There we go. That's the one we need. Yep. And part four done. And then we do need to, like I thought, we do need to go to the Genesis of Spites for our next part that we need. And here we are gonna need to gather Dryad's Tears from plants around the central crater lake. So we basically need to go down towards the lake. Not the tower itself. And yeah, there we already see one of the plants that we are gonna need to gather. Let's make our way down. This should be straightforward. Let's kill the skin the turkey and collect some dryad tears. Make our way around. And the last one, and yeah, I basically made my way from what was it? I think over there to over here. There are still more left, so you're definitely not gonna need to wait on anything to collect them. Let's see what this updates. So the last argument complete, a polish to shine. Acquire all needed ingredients, find and craft or purchase iron wood. Let's buy 500. We can use it anyway. And then we craft the needed hardened iron wood planks at a woodworking workbench. Holy crap, so we're gonna need to buy, we're gonna need to craft hardened iron wood planks. 12 in total. Okay, nice. There we go. And now we need to go head to Alvaro de Vil Villanueva. <laughs> And that is back here in Ebenscale Reach. Evero. Ah, and so it begins. I requested regular ironwoods, not treated with whatever this is. I need to revise the measurements, conduct pressure and stress testing. I just hope that it hasn't changed the structure too terribly. Well, I collected everything on the list. Yes, you did. If only Tang Ji treated this as a weapon rather than some fashion accessories, we'd be fine. Must everything be gilded or filigreed or have the right feel? A good weapon must be functional first and foremost. Alright, let's complete this quest. Take for example this blunderbuss lock design. What good would an emerald encrusted lock do? Dios mio, it's pointless. I have the original design for the lock, but for a weapon of this power, it needs something more. So what do you need from me? What we need will be dangerous to acquire. The pirates in Reekwater have flintlock pistols of unique make. That's what we need. Get some of those weapons if you can. We'll also need sliver of platinum, freshly mined. Anything else? There is also a cannon their hulking beast use resembles our blunderbuss. Find designs for that and it may solve another problem. With all of that and the original design, you should be able to put the pieces together. Alright, let's accept this quest. And yeah, it already you already see the difference, right guys? So for the first quests that we actually had for the epic weapons, we basically just need to farm a bunch of mobs and get a couple pieces and then eventually we need to enter the quests for this one it does seem like we are gonna need to do every single quest uh, uh separately and actually craft the different components separately uh so yeah again a little change in the epic quest here what was really really nice uh i, I kind of hate doing the same quests over and over again and just having to farm with not really a backstory to it just yeah go here kill these well that's the premise of every quest right go here and kill this or go here and gather this but a little bit more of a twist and turn is always nice so a precision lock travel to misty water torp in reek water for the needed ingredients travel to the forecastle drift in reekwater for a needed ingredient and gather a sliver of platinum from platinum veins to write a turnum so if we go just to the shop can we just buy the platinum 
We should be able to write. I think I still have platinum. Do I still have platinum? Let's go to the chest now that we can actually like pull from anywhere on the map. So, of course, we go to Brightwood where everything is. And then do I have platinum? I have platinum ingots, but I own... I... Is it the ore that we need? Or is it... There's no quest marker upon them. Get a sliv sliver of platinum from platinum veins to a tornum. So we are gonna need to gather it. And not actually get it from our inventory. Okay. Okay. And then, yeah. Misty Water Torp in Reek Water. And that is the Forecastle Drift and Broken Dreams. With Misty Water Torp, we need to collect four pistol walks from pistol wielding pirates. Don't all pirates hold pistols? Alright, that's three and last one. Pistolary here. And done. And somebody was targeting in the background. And now we need to travel to Four Castle Drift for the next part of course first let's make sure that we have a spawn point because yeah this is an elite zone it's gonna be a little more difficult and we need to locate the brute cannon schematic and it is right in front of us is it from a chest none of the npcs are holding it 42 meters. It, it says that it's downstairs. It's not actually on top of it. Is it in the water here? Let's watch out for the alligator. Five meters. Yeah, I know. It's going to be up top here in the tower. Crap. Okay, let's go back up. Let's avoid everything. Is it 40 meters? Is it gonna be inside? This is gonna be troublesome. It's here. Come on, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. No, no, no. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Can't get out. And I'm dead. Knew it. Oh, how the hell are we gonna get this? Whoo, that's gonna be a difficult one. Okay, so he's reset, he's reset. Everybody's reset right now. Correct? Yes, okay. Let's go in. Can I actually... Oh, you can actually just... Okay. Nice. This worked. So for the platinum veins that you're gonna need to mine, I basically made my way up top here on the mountain of the Cave of Stripped Death. It was the closest location that I knew that it was platinum. I've been running around. I had to wait a little bit on the spawns because somebody uh, probably farmed it a little while ago. Uh, there's two on top of the mountain. There's one downstairs on the mountain. I think there's like six or seven in total spawns that you can find here. And one of the reasons why we could not actually take out platinum from our inventory was that it, it is an object that is actually farmed from the node itself. Like the quest says. And here we go. We've got our parts done. Find, craft or purchase star metal ingots. And for that, we are going to go back towards... Well, we're got, probably going to need to be there for the quest to hand over the quest anyway. So recall the house. And we are going to go back to the market and buy a couple star metal ingots. Let's see if we own a couple star metal ingots. And a bright wood. And yeah, here we go. So we only needed two, right? Let's uh, split this up. And let's, well, let's take six. Six enough? Yeah, six is enough. Now we need to craft the custom blunderbuss lock at an engineering workbench. There we go. Custom a blunderbuss lock. Well, looks pretty nice. Let's craft this one up. There we go. And hand in the quest. Wang Tang. I knew this would happen. No critique of your abilities, just on the changes he's made to the design itself. These hard lines, a complete lack of style. 
This does not stand out. A wielder would take no pride in showing this off. Will there be a problem? No, no problem. I'm certain the lock will perform admirably. It will take some effort to ele elevate this weapon to a work of beauty without disrupting the function. But I'm up to the task. Alright, let's complete this quest. And while I'll, I'll while I address the shortcomings of the lock, the next element is the receiver. It is almost complete but requires a particular type of Azoth, along with a catalyst, to increase the weapon's power for Alvaro's purpose. And these items are rare. The Azoth, yes. The catalyst, oh, flakes of pure gold will be just fine, actually. And straight from the fresh vein. Once you have the Azoth and the gold sealed within the receiver, it will require a field test. I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Alas, Azoth can be reactive in the presence of corruption. The seals must hold up under the stress of battle. You'll need to carry it to where corruption is the strongest, such as the breaches that appear across the islands. And we're gonna need to do breaches for this one. So, the last argument. Gather powdered Azoth residue from Azoth Springs throughout Eternum. So, we cannot pull any regular Azoth water out of our inventory. We do need to go to the Azoth uh, Springs. And then we need, need to gather pure gold flakes from gold veins throughout Eternum. So, again, we see some changes to the quest, guys. No longer is it, oh, just go here and kill these mobs. We need to gather materials for this one. We actually need to... Like, prepare the elements itself for the blunderbuss, which is really, really nice. So, I'm gonna do some gold mining and some Azoth gathering. And if, whenever you feel like you are not sure where you can find resources, guys, well, we still have the newworldmap.com, where you can basically just click on anything. I need to find gold veins. Where can I find gold veins? We can see already Ebon Scale Reach does not have gold veins. We do have some Azot Springs here, but again, not really a much. So if we want to get gold fast and a lot of Azoth, we can see here on the map that we basically just need to go to Reekwater. The entire top corner here has gold veins, so I'm going to fast travel to this location, grab the gold veins, and then I basically can go make my way downstairs and actually gather up the Azot Spring. I knew there was platinum here from a previous experience i know there's azot springs here but i wasn't really sure if i could find any gold in ebon scale and this map really helps me out if i am on these quests where i need to find particular resources or anything else like if you just want to go farm you just pull up the map and check out where are the biggest node farms and where can i actually farm it i use this map a lot and i would suggest you guys to hit this map up as well there we go, five pure gold flakes, and we have one more node over here. So yeah, basically in this corner over here, I found six nodes really close together. Didn't really need to traverse the mountain all too bad. There we go, nodes completed. And then yeah, from the map, we could see that Eternal Pool has a lot of uh, the uh, uh, Azots. And then uh, around Siren Stand, we could find a lot, like... We just need to run around now uh, in Reek Water itself and we would be able to find those 12 Azot Springs pretty, pretty easily. And the last pool that we need and then we can actually go check it out because no, 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 no. There we go. He did say something about fighting portals, right? Defeat corrupted near corruption breaches to test the receiver's durability. And we already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the lowest. It doesn't say which zone you need to do it in, right? And this is like a quest you want to basically get over with as fast as possible. So what I'm going to do is going to first light down. And then actually go to the low zone uh, portals. So one more. There we go. And quest complete. And let's close this portal while we're up to... The task, right? The three pylons, and again, we get some more spawns. Dude, stop interrupting me. Get out of here. Finished with receiver, have you? Hmm. 
Internals are a bit over-designed. Could have used a different metal for the frame. Seals could be a bit thicker too. Well, I suppose it'll have to do. Come on. Even I know this is good work. Fine. The work is good. Excellent even. Nice and sturdy construction. Properly reinforced. Nowhere near as gaudy as his other work. Even the decorations here serve a purpose. Happy now? Just don't tell Zhangji I said so. <laughs> they are actually uh, trying to outsmart one another. There may be some sense in all his talk about style. Maybe. A good weapon still needs to be a weapon first. But as long as those decorations don't interfere, perhaps even it'll help, even help a bit and the buyers don't mind. You're sounding more like Changji. Hold on now. You won't catch me carving fire-breeding dragons on my barrels or adding gilded inlays into my stock. But perhaps some of my designs could be improved upon. Be a bit less severe. And speaking of barrels... Yeah, I need to get the materials for those. For the barrel reinforcements? Yes. I need muskets used in the Imperial Palace. And that strong armor their warriors wear. Also, some good rivets to bind everything. The pirates near there might have some you can acquire. So we are going to 66 Imperial Palace, guys. Let's accept the quests and see what it actually says. The barrels of unnearing accuracy. Travel to the Imperial Palace to collect ingredients for the Imperial Guards. Search the Storm Court shipment for needed rivets. And that is, of course... In the Imperial Palace. Okay, let's set our spawn. Not that I think I need it. I, I, I have a good idea who I'm actually going to need to kill. And I already have a good farm spot for a previous quest that we had to do here. And if it's the musket users, I know exactly the spot that I'm going to use to farm them. So we are going to head in. Let's check it out. So 12 broken Imperial muskets. And eight tainted armor plates from Palace of Warriors. So we are going to need to get, beat the guys with shields. And if we are going for muskets. Like quickly try to run through everything without dying. I should actually pick up the chests while I'm here. But I'm probably going to do that. And it seems there are some other people here as well. Trying to do their daily. So the musketeers are the ones holding the muskets of course. We are going to bypass all these big dudes here. And then this is one that we actually do farm. But I'm going to continue running on. Trying to get everybody off me. At least the big dudes. and Well, it's always easier if you can pull one mob at a time, right? And this is basically the location that I used before to actually farm. So we got a musketeer up there. We got one there. We got one up top. But I'm gonna keep running to actually get everybody off me. And we do have one over here as well. So basically I'm gonna farm between these four or five guys. So let's run to the end here. And this way I should only have one on me. That's gonna be this musketeer here. So I'm gonna spend some time basically farming these guys up. Till I get my 12 muskets. Let's see if it's a 100% drop or not. If we can kill this one. I am gonna use my uh, life staff for this one. Basically because, well, up and close, they basically melee you and interrupt you. But if I kind of stay my distance, I can actually just keep shooting at them without getting interrupted. And a little bit of avoiding bullets as well. So we did get a drop and broken Imperial muskets. Let's get the farm started. I always feel like I'm kind of doing a dance with these guys. Two to the left, two to the right, back up, back up, and get that shield down. And kill him, man. Last piece, tainted armor plate done. And what do we need to do now? Search Stormcourt shipment for the needed rivets. And that is 1.3 kilometers away, all the way here at the coastline. And it seems in the storm court shipment we need to gather our calcum rivets from armor piles. So 
Again, it is a gatherable objective. We already see one of these piles over here. And we are gonna need to collect 20 of them. Search the armor pile. And, oh, okay, so we get three from one search, meaning we're gonna need to do seven to actually get our objective done. That's actually not too bad. And last one, and even some of the piles, uh, I think two out of the ones we collected even gave us four uh, Oracalcum rivets. Yeah, this one gives us a four as well. So completed the quest. Yo, let's get out of here. Ow. And let's avoid this dude. Go somewhere where we can fast travel back to Wang Tang. Good, good. Let me see the... Hmm. You know, seeing these pieces together, there is something poetic about it all. The raw austerity of, this, this, of his design, paired with my artistry. Quite a pleasant duality to the work. He took your suggestions, suggestions to heart. Apparently, I can tell it's his handiwork, but there is more grace than usually in the form. Even if the starkness of the presentation, only minor changes from my request as well. This endeavor might succeed after all. Alright, let's complete. We have all the components for the plunder bus. Now to make it a functional. Wait, there's supposed to be like 8 quests to this, to this part, right? I think we did... Is this the fifth one that we're picking up? The added power comes mostly from the Azoth in the receiver, but it gets an added boost from a gunpowder ad ad additive that Evro has been working on. What is the additive? The corrupted gunners at the base of Shattered Mountain use a strange form of charcoal for their gunpowder. Elvro discovered that mixing this strange charcoal with regular gunpowder would produce an even stronger force. Any chances, any changes to this recipe then? Elvro and I have our differences, but I've always trusted his work. Perhaps I need to make that clearer to him. Where measurements and precision are concerned, he's unequaled. So exactly as his recipe states, no changes. And yeah, level 65 quest, let's accept. And we need to travel for Ignition of the Sublime Flame to Greater tribula Tribulation in Shattered Mountain to find the rare ingredients. Gather or purchase a Salpeter, gather or purchase a Flint. Yeah, we know already what we are gonna do. We're gonna hit the market, guys. If we can do this one without actually having to travel there... That would speed up our quest greatly. So, Saltpeter. Sal... Is it Saltpeter? Saltpeter? Yeah, there we go. And I'm not sure. I think 20 that we needed. Well, let's buy a couple more. There we go. That should be enough. And then... Oh, it was 12 Saltpeter and 20 Flint. And I think we have Flint in our... Thank Brightwood, what? No, I don't want to talk to you. So, I probably have Saltpeter in Brightwood as well. So, Flint? Yeah, look at that. 18. Do we have Saltpeter? Yeah, no Saltpeter. Okay. Oh, we need two more Flint. <laughs> two more Flint. Uh, just short. Flint? No, Flint. There we go. Flint, tier one and two. Thank you. Two Flint, a gold 18. And we still need to travel to the Greater Tribulation in Shattered Mountain to find rare ingredients. Ah, damn it. So where do we need to go? 4.6 kilometers away. We need to go to Murkart, guys. Here we go. Here we go. What are we gonna need to do there? Please don't tell me we're gonna need to beat like 50 dudes or something like that. <laughs> that would be a little bit harsh on, the, on, on myself and on other players on this quest. We're gonna need to beat up a couple guys at least. So 
Tell me. Tell me what I need to do. Like tainted right goal from defeating Murgard Pirate Lighters. Okay, so first off, let's try to avoid this dude by... No! Run around, run around, run around! Yo! No! Don't get hit! Don't get hit! Get up! Avoid the rock! Lay down! And I think it's this dude in front of us. The fire lighter. So we are gonna need to defi defeat the gunman. That was actually pretty easy. Okay, so we avoided him. Can I actually pull him to the side? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I'm not gonna get him close enough where I can actually avoid him. And the problem is if I go too far, usually I just stand here and then I can actually pull him towards me. The problem is that I'm gonna pull everything else as well. But can I get this butcher off me? And the other one. Shooting the barrel right now. Butcher is off me, that's good. Okay, the spearman is off me as well. Nice. Come on, dude. Drop what I need. If we only need to beat five, that's actually not too bad. And we can basically just stay here. And just every time he spawns, we can actually just stand. I think stand behind this crater here. Where he can't see me. So if we lie down on the floor, he can't see me. And I think he might actually like go towards uh, away from away from the brute, right? Where we actually can damage him without pulling that brute. So a gummy power powder that will supposedly increase the power of a special blunder boss. That kind of okay. Looks interesting. <laughs> there we go. Crafted and was done. And where is... Oh, he's standing over here all of a sudden. Oh, they both are. Okay. You have the mixture. Let me give it a taste. Tastes as foul as I remember, but in the right proportions. Tang Ji and I have assembled everything. I just need to get this seated in the receiver and we should be set. Tang Ji made certain I followed the recipe. Good. It would have blown up in your face otherwise. Given what you've done for the gun and for Tang Ji and I, I think the last argument is a proper name for this piece. Certainly for whoever you happen to point it at. Alright, let's complete this quest. We get some Ebon Scale Reach. And that was it? Did we... Did we get the gun? Holy crap, that was it? A 580, come on, developers! And it has strength and constitution? Ah, oh, come on, seriously? You know this is a weapon that uses strength and intellect. Just give it strength and intellect. Or give it... Well, well, yeah, if you give it strength and intellect, people can still use it to actually go like a full strength build with a little bit of intellect. And if you give it intellect strength, basically they would be able to go full intellect with a little bit of strength. But strength, constitution, constitution. So we get brash on it, 30% damage against targets with full health is pretty good. We get a vorpal, increased 14% headshot damage and enchanted light and heavy attacks deal 9.4 more damage. So this is actually a pretty good gun. This is actually, overall it is a pretty good gun. Like 580, 509 damage, so the damage is more, the thrust damage is more. It has good stats on it, headshot damage is good. Light and heavy attacks deal more damage is pretty good. So overall, it's it's a pretty, it's a pretty good weapon. Let's uh, check out how it looks. Ooh, look at that. Let's equip it. Yeah, it does look pretty good. It does look pretty good. Cool. And then it kind of has like that pump action reload at the bottom. Like... Tsh -tsh. And then the trigger. It's actually a really big trigger. Like it's not a small trigger. It's actually a handle that you pull together. Alright, so yeah. I think this was like only five quests. I, I do need to check it out. But that has felt like a faster quest. And again... 
if we look at it in overall, we had to gather a lot of uh, materials instead of like fighting constantly or just killing mobs for every piece of quest. So overall, I, I do feel that this this is de definitely a really good direction to go for your epic quests. But yeah, this is where I'm going to wrap this episode up, guys. Let's sit our ass down like we always do. We've got another one of the 580 weapons on our hands. And in the next episode, who knows, we might actually go for the next one. But yeah, like I said, this is where I'm going to end up this episode. If you want to see more of my quest progression or my let's play here in New World, just hit that subscribe button, guys. It would always help out a lot. I do hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.